All right, officially recording. I think Dow is probably going to go back to bed because he's got a super big headache. But, dude, let's bring on Joe. Joe, you here, buddy? Good. What's up, bro? What's up, man? What's going on? Let me, let me tell you something, dude. I, I'm excited, man. I'm excited, bro. I'm seeing a lot of opportunity in tech right now. I'm really, I can't wait for earnings like in the next couple of weeks. Dude, it's going to be interesting. That's it, all I can say. Bro, let's let's talk about that, Joe, because I know you do a lot in your webinars, but this is more of like a like a like a free forum where people can kind of see the content that we talk. Dude, what are your thoughts on the big cap market for the guys that have like maybe brand new to trading or are not part of MIC, man? Like, what are you seeing here, dude? Um, I think you just ride the wave. You know, don't be stubborn. Once the reality sets in, but I mean, you gotta. <clears throat> there was a phrase that they used back in uh, in in the uh, dot com bubble and a few other ones. I forget what it's called. It was um, basically they they used the phrase to describe the mentality that people have was like you know prices are at irrational levels. Irrational exuberance. Does that sound right? That, irrational, that irrational exuberance. I think that's what it was. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this was something that, that they talked about in the dot com bubble was the level of irrational exuberance out there. And it basically is like everyone and their mother is just optimistic on the market there's no real fundamental valuation behind where we're trading, yep. but no matter, I mean, regardless of what happened, it just continued higher, higher and higher and higher. And so that's what I think we're still in that kind of little uh, irrational exuberance bubble. Well, the, is, the, thing, the thing that's interesting to me, Joe, and, and you know, this is a really good topic of conversation for like bubble and, possible recession or possible at least market pullback or any form of a bubble. Because guys, you have to understand what a bubble is, right? A bubble is this preconceived notion that it's never going to fail. Let's just keep going. You know, it's like, it's like a Ferrari revving its RP, the, the, it's redlining its RPM. You can't do that forever. Eventually the, the bubble bursts and the Ferrari fucking engine explodes on you, dude. And you can't push it to the max 24 seven, right? So the thing that I want to bring to your attention, uh, Joe, and ask your opinion, bro, I see stock market all time highs. I mean, literally, dude, I'm looking at the SPY right now. Like I'll pull up the SPY for people who don't pay attention to this stuff. We are at 407 practically. Check this out in real estate right now, dude, in Phoenix, where I live in Arizona, I can't get a house, bro. And what I mean by that is not that, oh, you don't have the money for it. Dude, it, um, a house that I want hits the market because I'm on Zillow all the time looking for opportunity, right? Even if it's just an investment purpose and flip with a buddy or something. Dude, the house after six hours has 19 offers. My sister just put her house on sale uh, for, she bought it a year and a half ago for 375,000, a very, very normal house, just a normal, you know, house in Arizona, Phoenix. Yeah. Like an HOA house, just a like cookie cutter a, house. A cookie cutter HOA, bro, that was once new construction, that is yep. not new construction anymore. And it's not even like, dude, it's not a house I'd want to live in. She fucking cleared 150000 net by selling it this year, a year later on a $375,000 house. Dude, I'm, I'm literally serious. Ooh. I think she sold it for six hundred grand. God have so, mercy. So, so Alex walks into a Miami Rolex shop. I walk into a Rolex shop in Arizona. They don't have Rolexes in the cases. I go to get my watch clean, dude. I can't, like, I can't even look at watches while I'm there. There's, people are spending $60 million on NFTs. Everybody's spending money on stupid shit. These memes talk to NFTs. Bro, where's all this money coming from? Where's all this money? Like, it's a bubble, dude. Everyone's throwing their money at everything. The people that have this disposable money and like there's certain like pockets of supply and demand that are making this so crazy. But dude, this is a bubble. Like, Absolutely. Like, like when Rolex shops don't have Rolexes, like you know something's up, dude. What the hell? Well, right now you can't really buy anything that, that has 
either overseas manufacturing or really um, just has to be shipped. It, uh, I tried to buy, I tried to buy like a, a new, um, a new bedroom set. And they told me that like, and I still bought it, but I'm not going to have it until June gone. And I asked, I was like, what's going on? And they're like, nothing, nothing was manufactured. Nothing is manufactured. Everything is on back order. And so a lot of people are like, well, you know, it's, it's because of the, the, whatever that barge that got stuck in that canal. I don't think that's it, man. I think it's just, we're just trying to catch up. Well, well, and the thing about that, Joe, is like there's a certain level of supply and demand, right? Like obviously like a Rolex dealership or Wayfair or something is going to be backed up to a certain degree because obviously, you know, with the pandemic hit, they had to close down some factories or they had to, um, you know, some people had to work from home or they had to adjust their the status quo, right? But dude, it still doesn't like makes sense that things can be so unbelievably backed up in my opinion that like all this dumb money, it's like with between stimulus checks and everything at all time highs, like I swear to God, I feel like I'm in the big short right now. And I'm like, dude, when is this bubble going to pop and reality sinks in and people are going to be jumping out of windows. Yeah. If, if those of you were not around, I was, I was still really young when the, when the dot com bubble burst. Yeah have very vague memories of it and stuff like that. You know, I remember things being discussed, but I didn't know the real economic impact of it. Um, go read this book, uh, that book right there. Ir uh, the book's called Irrational Exuberance. Uh, it's a book by uh, Robert Schiller, who is, uh, I think he was a Princeton economist or something of those uh, something along those lines um it's a very insightful book for kind of understanding what a what a bubble looks like yeah like what it looks like right like the like the this this false exuberance like this false like it's it's like a facade right it's like everybody yep. thinks everything's good but it's like a, it's like two faces to the coin right it's like it's like both sides it's like it's on heads right now but dude tails could be around the corner, like when reality seeps in. Right. And, yep. and when you look, when I see it, when I see a housing market, dude, when I'm not kidding you, Joe, I'm not even kidding you, dude. One of the reasons why I came out to Arizona is cause like, I'm, well, not only do I hate Los Angeles, I would never buy here. Cause I think eventually everyone's going to leave, which they started to see. I got a hint of that. Everyone started leaving. Like at the time I started really falling in love with Arizona and actually making the transition, which was um, a year ago to this day. And then I moved back for a couple months just because my life was so fucked up with an ex, but, but, but I was already wanting to vacate because I saw that what, how things were going. And what I mean is, is like, I started looking for real estate in Arizona. I was ready to make the move. In fact, a lot, um, I was telling Alex about this, but at the beginning of the year, dude, I've paid for plans. I had a builder in motion, bro. I was going to build my own spec house in, um, in a Northern Phoenix. I was going to build a house and then guess what happened overnight, dude, I'm not even kidding, bro. I had plans later. I had everything. I do $20,000 for plans. Got them. Here's yep. the thing. Here's the, here's the fucking thing. Lumber windows quadrupled. What he was originally quoting me at was like, dude, I'm going to hook you up. Like I'm a fr family friend. We'll build this spec house, bro. He he's literally telling me don't build this house right now. Do not like you are literally going to like what I feel like lose out on $150,000 by building it right now, just out of FOMO. I'm like, Oh, fuck it. I'll wait. Yep. Dude, it happened overnight. I was ready. I had the plans and then overnight, everything doubled and tripled and quadrupled. I was like, we're in a bubble. We're in a bubble. Yeah. There is a serious supply issue because I talked about this last night because somebody asked about like a real estate question too. Um, so for those of you that don't know, I do real estate as well. I don't just trade. I, I think just trading is silly. Um, I think it's a pipe dream and you should not oh, you, do it. You have so many more hours in the day to pursue side yeah. ventures. Like, <laughs> I, I think if you only trade, you're freaking degenerate and you have nothing better to do with your life. 
legitimately, dude, coming from the horse's mouth, I agree with the same thing. And I would add to that and say, if you are only trading 14 hours a day, not only you're a degenerate, you're actually lazy as fuck not to have another source yeah. of income, dude. Like you're actually lazy to learn something else. Once yeah. you understand trading, you actually start understanding that like, dude, like- It doesn't require that much attention. It requires like, like, like two hours a day of attention to really realistically be a, like a full-time, quote unquote, full-time trader. Bro, go build, go build side hustles. Go build other forms of stream of go build generational wealth. Like, yep. yep. So I love so that. I do I real estate that. as well on the side. And the problem that is occurring right now, and this is even in the rental market, rentals, purchases or anything, is mortgage rates are so low right now that most homeowners don't want to sell. Most homeowners have just refinanced and you know they bought the house in the beginning so they know they love the house. So they're, they're not, they don't want to sell it. So <clears throat> um, they've just refinanced at an incredibly low rate that they'll probably never see again in their lifetimes. And there's no reason to sell their house right now. They'll never see these levels again in their life. Because lifetime. here's the problem is, okay, let's say you sell your house, right? Let's say you sell your house. Now it's time to go look for a house. Well, now you're a buyer. And guess what the problem is with all the buyers? There's 14 offers on every single house. And yeah. eventually when you do buy a house, you overpaid. Well, Joe, here's what happens. If we're in fact in a bubble, like we talk about, you sell your house like my sister did. Now my sister did it correct, right? She didn't sell her house to immediately buy a new one. She got you know, a much better house, new construction in Oregon. She's actually moving states, right? Like she's, she's moving out. And she, I, I have no idea why she yeah, went to there's that state. Not there's every much, state, not every much, state is happening like it is in the three states, in my opinion, that this is happening in is Texas, Arizona, and Florida. Correct. They, which they are, which the are really the three target states for people that want to move from the East Coast and West Coast. Well, well and here's the thing. The, the, the thing I was getting at is she had locked in a new construction home with her family a year, dude, a year ago, the new construction home, which for those who don't know, take a year to build, dude. Like if not a year and a half, depending on supply and demand, like you can't get lumber in Arizona. You can't get fucking windows, dude. They can't even build you a house under a two year timeline. She did this a year ago before this huge rush came. So she's actually like making the transition immediately in the new construction home versus if you would sell your house right now and you pocket some nice cheese, then you buy something immediately and we have a market crash tomorrow, bro, you're down 200,000 on your house. Exactly. Now yeah. you're stuck in your new purchase, like a, like a bad stock. Yep. So it's, I get it, dude. I get it. It's just crazy because the, th the reason why we're talking about this guys is this is how the market works too. We're literally in such inflated territory that unless, you know, and what Joe mentioned the other day on an IG live with bow is if you're invested at highs right now and not protecting yourself with like, almost like, you know, you know, puts and calls and whatever you're doing, you know, with, with the stock market or big caps, that's a little dangerous. And that's what some of the, you know, that's what some of the veterans do who are invested. Right. So, yep. so I think we're in a bubble. I see it everywhere. I mean, when you start telling me, dude, Rolex stores are empty, like that's, that's a level that's unprecedented. Like I know there's supply and demand, but dude, you can't even, what? You can't even go look at them if you wanted to. Like dumb money and stimmy money and people getting, you know, all this NFT shit. Like it, it just seems crazy to me, man. It seems like we're at like the, the Ferrari just redlining for so long that eventually that, that foot's got to come off the gas pedal a little bit. You know what I mean? Yep. But we'll, I think personally we'll remain in this, in this hype for, uh, I think Biden will, or will really kind of fake it till he makes it. Um, I, I, all of this, I well, think it'll I, last the entire term of Biden's presidency. Wow. Do you really uh, think that long? Cause I was going to give it a year and a half to two years, Joe, specifically because of interest rates. So because interest rates are so low on houses right now and Joe's a real estate guy, so he can talk circles around me on this field, but when the interest rates are so low and people can work from home, why wouldn't they flock to it? Right? Like why wouldn't they, yep. especially if things like hyperinflation are possible in the future with all this printing of money, obviously for those who don't know inflation, two to 3% a year, your money's going down, dude, your shit's getting eaten away. So a hundred dollars this year is 97 next year, you know, on average, but dude, with all this printing of money, that could be $94. Inflation might just raise. And when interest rates start actually coming up, because the only way 
that you're going to be able to pay for a pandemic of this exposure or this printing of money is dude, you're going to have to tax and for a lack of a much better term, dude, you're going to have to rape normal people. You, me, Joe, Bao, you're going to have to tax the shit out of us to pay for your fuck up. So when yep. that happens, interest rates, dude, are not going to stay at one to 3%, bro. They may go back to 18% in our parents' generation, man. Yeah, I think, I think over time that, I mean, just follow the Fed's interest rate plan. Right. And that, in my opinion, is going to be the timeline for this kind of bubble to pop. And once I'm, I just get this feeling that once there's any discussion of an interest rate hike, that's when it'll all start. There, it'll that's, be small at first, you know, quarter, yep. quarter basis point. Um, you know, it won't be, it won't be a lot. And then it'll slowly trickle its way up. <laughs> Dude, drink man just said probably one of the smartest things that's, that's been said today. Uh, some production builders are purposely slowing down construction and jack up the prices and milk it all the way. Dude, hundred percent. If you ever build a home, which Joe would tell you, and I learned this year cause I was going through in the beginning of the year, I have a family friend, dude. He's the best friend of my stepdad, which means, dude, this is like family blood doing. In fact, he's a broker. So any of, so not only did I get a deal on plans getting made, that's why I wanted to go through with this spec house. Not only that, if something's going for 274 a square foot in like a new construction, he can build the replica fucking house for me for 174 per square foot, right? Which means yeah. that no matter what, even if I build a house in a market, I'm still up even if I get a crash tomorrow because I'm already up about 150 to 200,000, let alone he's a broker dude because he's a family friend. He's a fucking broker. You know what that means? I don't have closing costs. He kicks it back to me. I save 30,000 there on a $600,000 house. Yep. Dude, like, like when you, when you figure out how to play the game and shake the right hands and know the right people, you have no idea how much you can save on invisible fees that you didn't know. So the question from Trenton was, what's the best way to short the bubble? My opinion, don't try to short the bubble. That was, that's my opinion as well. That's, that's my opinion because, because the markets, like Joe said, are designed to go up and they will do anything that they can. Oh, hey, cool, man. Drink, man. I love it. That's the power of MIC, man. If I need to know about custom homes and stuff, he's the, he's the go-to guy. See, that's the power of the people, man. There's masters of any kind of niche in here. Um, but when it comes to Trenton, if, if the stock market is designed to go up, pal, like, dude, the last thing you want to do is bet against it for anticipatory reasons. Like I anticipate it's going to go down. So I'm actually going to go again. It's fun, go against its fundamental nature. And not only is it, it's, it's fundamental nature to go up anyone that's ever bet against the American economy, 99% of them have lost. Not everyone's a Michael Burry from the big short. And yep. second, when you have the fucking fed print money and we'll do whatever it takes to keep this economy afloat, no matter how ridiculous it may seem or to what, extraordinary levels they're willing to go that's just a double whammy that's like strike one and two against the batter that wants to anticipate a um crash because it quote unquote should you, does that make sense like dude i love this topic of conversation man because it's so it's so like it's relative man it's relative to what we're going through right now yep and it'll be a slow shift it'll be yeah, it'll be some, it'll, I, I talked about this last night. It's, it's simple supply and demand right now. There's no supply because interest rates are so low in housing that people are just refinancing their current homes and they're not putting it on the market to sell it. Regardless of the profits, they will make more savings in the interest rate refinance than they will selling a home and purchasing a new home through all the closing costs. They will make more money by just refinancing. So they're just refinancing and there's no decent property on the market right now that doesn't last more than a, a week. So well, that depends on the state, man, because I, I'm not kidding you when I say this, Joe, a house doesn't last four hours in Arizona without 20 offers. Four oh, absolutely. hours. Yep, absolutely. And it, so what will happen, it probably, this is just my prediction, is that as interest rates increase, um, everybody that signed up for a variable rate mortgage that is not a fixed rate mortgage, uh, all of their interest rates will 
slowly start to tick higher and it'll get to a point where they can't make their house payments. And that's when foreclosures will be beginning. And then all of a sudden we will have a rush of supply. Yep. <laughs> and I personally believe it will be another 2008 situation. And, and here's what happens, guys. Like when, so let's equate this to how do we equate this to trading, correct? Because the reason why we can talk about this on a stock trading webinar is because markets are no different. Chasing is no different. If I, buy, if I build a house right now, no matter what my connections are and they're good, I'm fucking chasing, dude. I'm buying lumber at the breakout. Point. I'm buying right here. This is where I'm buying. If I buy a stock right here, I am chasing. I am waiting for that pullback on a very strong stock to then break out higher, but I need that pullback first, right? I need something that's really good so I can get equity on the deal. I need value in this so it can go into value later. I don't want to buy something no matter how good a deal I get on it. Market crashes tomorrow and I'm susceptible to hundreds of thousands of dollars of risk in value and or equity in the property. That's chasing a stock at all time highs. You don't do that in any version of any market. I don't care if you're trading Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, NFTs, stocks, or real estate. If you chase, you die. Yep. And for those that are curious that, you know, why, why are we discussing economic things like real estate? Well, historically, real estate has been either a lagging, it has been an indicator probably the entire existence of the stock market. So understanding what's happening in real estate can help you judge what's going to predictably happen in the overall markets. So that's why knowing that irrational exuberance kind of phrasing is important. You know that you don't necessarily need to uh, like live and breathe in the housing market, but housing market dictates a lot of what happens in the overall market. The overall market can be screaming to all time highs, but <laughs> then if the housing market is slow, that's kind of like a looming dark cloud and vice versa. Market doesn't look so hot. Housing doesn't look so hot. There's the beginning of the times. Okay. Which is, you know, this is what Michael Burry predicted back in the 2008 era was, but it was a different situation because that was, that was a financial crisis and they were underwriting a lot of uh, really, really bad subprime credit mortgages. Right. So, it was also fraud at that point. Like literally. Yeah. Fraud. It's not, it's not the same situation because there are um, acts such as like Dodd-Frank that prevent, or they say they prevent, those types of things from happening now but you know it, it's important to know that because um do you know are you going to have fear when you approach the market every day no i don't think you need to have fear when you approach the market every day that a, but that the bubble's going to pop any moment no the bubble probably will not pop any moment um but when it does it'll probably be overnight it'll probably be you wake up one morning, everything's fine. You go to sleep, you wake up the next morning and the world is on fire. Well, that's a scary thing, right? So, so the reason, again, guys, it's, it's a universality yeah. behind markets and there's no difference between what market you're in. There is human emotion. So if you're chasing real estate, you're a chaser in stocks. It's just the fucking way it is, dude. Because here's the yep. thing, like, let's go through it, right? You see something like, the QQQ today and you're like, dude, all right, it's blast in the morning. You're like, boom, boom, boom. It's going, it's going. I love this. We're off bottoms. We're not weak anymore. Or I'm sorry, this is a spy, but whatever. You use whatever example you want. The QQQ yep. is basically a mirror to this today. And you go, dude, I'm going to load up on tech stocks. You do. And then, you know, this has a little bit of a shutdown. You, this comes and now all your tech stocks are down. Had you just waited for this and maybe really good companies on a sale, you could have theoretically quote unquote bought a good dip on support, line that up with a couple lines. If you're a day trader, the whole point is waiting for your pitch. And as day traders, as investors, it does not matter. Warren Buffett talks about this. It could be Alex, it could be Warren Buffett. There's no difference. If you have a hundred tickers in play or a hundred different opportunities to invest, 
wait for the three that fit your process, your criteria. Stop swinging at everything based on emotion. We talked about this exact thing that happened in the market today, last night. Um, <clears throat> basically, I outlined a bunch of rules for members. Uh, for those of you that are watching on YouTube that weren't in that webinar, I highly recommend joining and watching that webinar. It's, uh, it's available to monthly, so you don't have to pony up all the additional uh, everything for annual or lifetime. Just come in and try out a monthly for a little bit and go from there. The webinar talked about the key um, times of day when a stock is likely to fail to continue higher. And I talk about how to use um, the pivot structure to guide you to know when there is a likely, a strong likelihood that you will probably be buying a top. Um, and then vice versa on the short side, this can protect you on the short side and guide you to know when you should cover or get aggressive. Right. <laughs> Right. So we talked about it last night. We talked about the key times of day. Um, we talked about volume playing a role, talked about all kinds of stuff. I gave probably three or four examples in there. I went through a chart where I drew it out, showed exactly what the pattern is supposed to look like um, and gave almost every single scenario. Um, and I will give away one free stock idea right now, which is going to be Costco. <laughs> Again, <laughs> Joe's always <laughs> Joe's always loving on Costco. <laughs> it will be Costco again. Um, <laughs> I longed Costco. Bumper. At, <laughs> I know, right? I longed Costco at three eighteen, and um, I sold some at three forty two. I did it using options, but we talk about this bread and butter setup that occurred. And I'll, I'll annotate it right here. I think Val, or Val, sorry. I read your name on the webinar and I'm like, it's Val. Oh, wait. Dude, I do the same thing. I literally will be talking to like Woody and I'll be like, okay, Val. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, you're like, oh, damn it. No, not me. Yep. So um, <laughs> right here on this day, that's the day I bought it. This setup right here is a textbook setup. And I went over that in a webinar as well. And... Oh God, I get all these pumper email or these text messages. Hi, my name is blah, blah, blah. I'm looking for an investor friendly realtor, blah, blah, blah to work with. I was wondering, no, you're not. You're with a company and it's a bunch of fucking pumping. Bro, for, for, oh, by the way. That, that's you know what? Everyone else is looking for a realtor that has investment properties to sell you as well. So, by the way, guys, that's party. any that's any form of any kind of success, dude. Now that like obviously people know like that I, I have a decent amount of following or people follow me. Now I've got an impersonator on freaking Instagram yep. trying to sell people crypto. Dude, I handle the emails and social media for freaking uh, MIC. If you would do you know how many marketing agencies reach out to us and are like do you have a marketing agency i can help you with xyz and pump your shit up i'm like dude we're good we're fucking good dude. like yeah oh dude i spend day. half of my day just just blocking spam you have so, to, bro they'll mob these you. two levels these two levels right here in costco i i mean this <laughs> i'm extremely bullish on on costco walmart and uh, Home Depot, which are, you know, probably the three biggest retailers in terms of uh, shopping and then home improvement. Home Depot's chart is just, oh my God, it's glorious. I, dude, uh, Home Depot and Lowe's are two of my favorite big casts because they're nice dividend pairs on top of that. Home Depot yep. is a can't fucking miss. I mean, look at I'm this. Bro, like, I got this can't slow it down it's by the a way, freaking freight train by the way joe i was buying this here still got it <laughs> nice i i have this in in, in uh in a retirement account right here dude because yep. again again what do we talk about all the time joe this is one of my favorite things to talk about what is a future proof company people will always need starbucks and their coffee fix they will yep. always need trash pickup. They will always need to build their home or fix on their home. Real estate's one of the biggest industries in the world. Guys, these are can't miss investments. Be now, I'm not giving you investment advice. I'm just saying within these sectors, because no matter what happens in the world, guys, these are need-based businesses. It's need-based. 
it's need based at the human function level. But Joe, continue with your Home Depot analysis. And we lost Joe. <laughs> Joe, where yet? He's like, he's like, if you keep interrupting me. <laughs> Hold on, guys. I'm sure Joe's internet kicked out for a sec. We will, uh, we will get the man, the myth, the legend back. Sorry about that. <laughs> What's up, dude? Baby just woke up, so. You good? You still good? I can, you might have to bounce. Yeah, I'm probably have to growl. Anyway, that that's pretty much all I had for to for that. Um, yep, we talked about uh, a lot of what we discussed today in more detail in last night's webinar. So come join, come check it out. And uh, if you have any questions, just shoot me a message. Dude, guys, reach out to Joe, man. He's a huge asset for big caps and options, uh, especially our new guys who are looking to learn the trading basics. Man, I'm telling you, watch his series. And you guys are going to like it a lot, man. I, I promise you, you're going to like it, man. Joe, thanks. All right, man, for I got to bounce. We'll see you. Joe, do your thing, buddy. See you, man. Later. When it comes to trading, guys, when it comes to trader lifestyle, Joe is the best example. He is a father and a trader, a father of a lot of kids. The fucker keeps procreating every day, it feels like. But the point is, is you don't have to not be a family man. You don't have to not be a real estate investor. Dude, you can devote a couple hours of your day to become a trader, learn our system, learn our process, learn to make, you know, trade the first hour of the day, whether you're short, go into, you know, after the first hour, learn zombies, learn how to long during zombie hour, maybe spend an hour later in the day, come back for a reversal hour. And dude, I'm telling you right now, you instantly can make supplement or make money and make it a full-time living if that's the route you want to go. And, you know, it's obviously within your comfort level. I always tell people, you know, trading is not for everybody is obviously you have to risk money for a living, but if you ask me, and this is not my personal opinion, this is an opinion for many billionaires that have said, uh, and I've just kind of ran with it because I love it, but dude, the biggest risk in life is not taking risks, right? Like following the beaten path of getting a job, going to a lot of bad debt, you know, load up on your credit cards, get student loans, and then just build someone else's assets and dreams your whole life without learning a skill or a talent. It's very hard to get ahead, get wealthier, live life on your terms. So there's a saying that like, you know, with traders, spend a few years of your life like like most people won't so you can live the rest of your life like most people can't click a couple buttons make a couple hundred a day make a couple thousand depending on your risk levels the size you use if you're jj make twenty thousand a day it seems like dude you just crush it but everybody's different everybody's got to learn a skill and ours just happens to be day trading and finding patterns within price action so you know if you think mic is a good fit for you awesome you're already part of us if you're looking in and you're like I really want to learn, you know, things like stuff moves and death candles and to know when to short because of, you know, indicators like this and know when to follow trend and stuff. We're going to teach you at the best of our abilities, man. This is the, this is the one-stop shop for anything like this. Um, only job where you can be in your boxers and make money every day. Well, technically, Mike, I think there's probably a couple jobs that fit in that industry, but I hear what you're saying, pal. <laughs> I, uh, uh, those mattress actors, uh, don't even have to wear underwear. <laughs> uh, guys, do you have any questions? Let's go over some questions that you have any fired off any questions. I'll do this for a couple more minutes. Um, and then, uh, and then we'll rest it up, man. But does anybody have any questions? Joe had bounced because of his kid just woke up and, uh, Bow's actually got a massive headache. So he's actually laying down. So that's okay. So uh, trading is a craft, just like plumbing, electrical, you know, et cetera. I love that. You know, the thing about trading guys is, is it, it's a skill like any other, right? You're actually kind of almost building a business within yourself with a certain amount of skill set that every day you can, you know, instead of charge for quote unquote charge for based on a, you know, a need based business or something like that, you're, you're almost charging clients by learning how to trade well, right? Like you're expecting a paycheck because of the minimal or the nominal work you put in. So you know, I'll give you guys just a couple things today in this free webinar because I really, really don't like to talk too, too much as I feel like I've got an open mouth. And I just want to teach everything, but this is a free webinar, guys. So I'll give you a couple tidbits, but here's the thing we're looking at every single day as traders. Let's just go through the list, right? Number one, you can't be fighting trend, man. You can't be fighting trend. I cannot say this enough. You want to be a trend follower as traders the most unprofitable or the most inconsistent or at least the headbangers guys that just keep bang their head against the wall all day because they can't find consistency are the people that fight trend they add add and add to a losing position now let's look at the difference right let's look at the difference so 
OCGN started running today. You know, it ran, it caught some traction. Then it started really running. If you're shorting this past any kind of pre, any kind of under pre-market high and you're not stopping out when this breaks and you keep adding and adding and adding, it doesn't matter if it comes down later. This could continue to 14 without you knowing if it's going to. Guys, if we knew that this was just going to top out at eight, at, say we started shorting at six and we just knew it was going to top out at eight. Well, bro, dude, Bow, Alex, and myself would throw 10,000 shares, 50,000 shares, 100,000 shares if we knew that this was the end result and it ends back at six. You don't know this is going to happen. We'd be billionaires if that was the case, right? Like throw caution to the wind. Hey, it's going to, you know, it's, it's trading at six and dude, it's only going to top out at 820. Cool, man. Load my entire fucking account at eight. Like you don't know that these things are going to happen. I've seen these blow traders out of the water. So the difference would be is because you don't know how far trend is going to go, don't fight it. Don't fight it. This is a long until it proves otherwise and then breaks under VWAP. So we've got many traders. You know, one of the number one things I tell new traders is, guys, stop fundamentally breaking rules. And what I mean by that is not your rule set, the rule set of price action. Start longing stocks over VWAP that are strong, that are hot chicks, and short stocks only when they're under VWAP, especially when you're brand new and you're trying to find this level of consistency that maybe you don't have. It. Dude, that's it, man. That's fucking it, dude. Flash, awesome, man. He hit, if I'm not mistaken, that's this pop, right? Uh, what time is it? Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm telling you, man, this is the reason why our members have wonderful charts and practically these days better charts than you know me, Bauer, Alex is because dude, it's repeatable. It's, it, it's scalable. Like these guys are learning a very repeatable process. Wait for the backside to short and hit the front side of a stock that's strong. Today, there were really no great long setups. This was actually kind of broken with no real confirmation because it's tick, 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 tick. This is not really fluid. This is not really, um, uh, there's just not a lot of volume, right? So this is not a short by any means. So you wait for it to squeeze out the early anticipatory shorts you wait for it to get longs, what's called stuck on their position, and you hit under VWAP, man. It's as simple as that. So, you know, and then you have things like this in like ASTC, where maybe they're in the beginning of the day proving that, all right, let's let it prove that it's going to be a nice mover. You know, the deviation from VWAP that we always talk about, it's going to be a blast off VWAP. Oh, nope, we get a mass, massive stuff. This is actually not a long. It's actually a flip by a short. There's your indicator. It's a total trend break, right? And it even broke this little level right here. Like, dude, this was like, this was huge. You had, not only did you have a rejective three, a whole and half dollar, you had a massive death candle stuff. The, the candle closed. I always talk about this. When the candle closes and doesn't have a big wick to the bottom, that's massive. And also it broke this key level right here. Like, dude, this was huge. Like if you weren't hitting these pops, like, you should be hitting those pops. You know what I mean? Because now you have defined risk above that level um, of basically three to stop out if you're wrong, which nine times out of 10, this actually just continues downward like it did. Now that's a huge sell-off that you can't predict, but dude, there's a scalp in here one or two before zombie hour. That's what I'm trying to say. So this is a repeatable process, guys. If you understand price action or you don't, it's all in the flavor of process. So I like shorting. I'm going to wait for XYZ under VWAP. I'm going to wait for backside. I'm going to hit only low hanging fruit. And then if I'm along, et cetera, et cetera. And we teach that to vice versa. I'm only going to hit strong stocks above VWAP that are making new highs, pulling back to a support that I want to catch the first bounce, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So anybody that's looking in MIC, dude, what, if you want a supportive community, if you want like the ultimate positive community, that's the whole thing about weeding out the lifetime process is because a lifetime member is going to be with us for exactly what it sounds for, for life. We need to make sure that you're a really cool dude or a chick or someone that wants to learn and help give back. So this is what I'm talking about. If you feel like you want to be part of like the best community on the planet, man, with the most positive people, we don't put up with any negativity. MIC is the place for you. And if you're having struggles or you're having trouble in your trading, number one, did you lose $200 today? That could have been a month at MIC. Did you lose two grand or exactly 1890? Dude, that's a year of MIC where we're going to teach you the right way. The number one thing that, that traders do wrong, um, MIC is very unique. You won't get teachers like Tosh in any room. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. 
Uh, yeah, dude, JJ just went lifetime, man. He's doing super good. JJ, dude, is like one of the best examples we've ever seen at MIC, guys. He was a trader who's been trading, you know, many years, found consistency, then lost it, found consistency, then lost it, committed fully to our, you know, our whole structure at MIC, committed to the, dude, and now he's just, he's on top of the world, man. And I love seeing it because it proves that what we built was for a legitimate reason. We knew three years ago that, dude, this stuff works for us. And because it's based on human emotion, you know, obviously price action, it's repeatable. It's not a biased opinion of like, let's just keep buying the dip until it bounces or let's keep shorting the top until it breaks. Like, that's not what we do, man. We've got a process that everybody can do. <laughs> dude, look at him. His butt now he's pulling in three. That's like a small p &L for JJ, dude. That's freaking awesome, man. So we made JJ a moderator because now he goes out of his way to help people. And the whole point of MIC, guys, is, is once you figure it out, pass the elevator back down to the next guy, man, or the next girl that's in need of it. And that's how you build a self-sustaining community is when one level's taken care of, there's another level that's struggling that you can help. So, you know, just big hats off to JJ. Hats off to anybody in here that's helping other members, even if you're still trying to find consistency. And I know a couple of you guys are, and trust me, keep fighting the good fight, man. Keep fighting the good fight. It takes a big work ethic. It takes understanding this. And, you know, there's always the how do I say the general notion of when it comes to trading, just like anything else. And, you know, this is a real webinar based on psychology today. If anything, you know, psychology of markets, what it means to be a trader, what it means to be an investor of any form. And, you know, just, just know that without a work ethic, man, it's hard to get anywhere. And if you treat trading like a hobby, you're going to get hobby results, man. But if you treat it like a job, like people like JJ did, or a lot of our moderators did, you're going to get, you're going to get um, career results. You're going to get, if you treat it like a career, cr treat it like a job and take it very seriously. Well, oh, and here's another example, guys. I mean, dude, this is what I was saying about chasing. Now look at QQQ. Dude, this was, bi oh, sorry. These are the tech stocks. This is the tech market. This is like the spy for tech. Um, dude, this was banging in the first part of the webinar where people could have chased. They could have chased right here and been like, wow, while Tosh is talking, all tech's banging. And now, dude, look at this. Like, this is the shit that I'm talking about. Don't chase any market, whether it's building a home, buying a Rolex, buying a freaking used car, buying a new car. Don't chase, man. Don't give into this FOMO of, I have to do it now. I have to do it now. Because if you just wait for your perfect pitch, bro, it comes. But you got to wait for it. And that's the whole thing about trading and what we teach at MIC is being on the right side of trend, knowing when your edge is presented. Ooh, very nice. Knowing when edge is presented. That's gonna be a nice play tomorrow. And, um, and, and just basically knowing how to swim in and out of process, guys, because that's what it's all about. It's about learning how to maximize, make money. It's learning about how to protect your accounts. And uh, chasing is not a trading strategy at MIC. It's just not. And there are rooms that will teach you to chase, unfortunately. I won't name names, but basically any pumper, you know, get in, get in. This shit's hot. This shit's hot. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And then, you know, they're selling into your buys, man. That's the whole agenda. That's the pumped position. That's the, that's the idea that they were backing, right? That's like the thing that they were going behind. So, you know, if you guys have any questions, man, text me 213-458-5997. I will absolutely answer your questions, get you started in MIC if you feel like it's a good fit. Um, again, it's no pressure, man. We don't pressure anybody. We know that we're the best. We know that we offer because of our members, because of the moderators. We're not the best because we're like King Kong beating our chest. Not by any means, dude. We're the best because we have 15 plus freaking people willing to help you in any form all hours of the day, whether they're member calls, uh, PMs, everything. And we go above and beyond and work 14 hours a day to make sure that your needs are met. That's why we're the best. We're the best in customer service. We're the best in this. And if you feel like you want to be a part of that, man, just hit me up and I'll answer your questions and get you started. But I'm telling you, man, MIC is a freaking revolution and we, we haven't even begun yet, dude. We're three years in. We haven't even started, dude. We haven't even started. So couple, couple closing questions. If you guys have any, uh, I'll definitely answer shit. I think um, usually Joe handles the YouTube. Sorry, guys, if I missed a little bit of this. Um, yeah, Joe usually handles the YouTube questions. Um, does anybody, anybody last minute questions in chat or anything, members? Otherwise, we can close this up a little bit early today and get Bao on next week. <laughs> Bao, you, the tradition is when Bao comes on, he usually trades live with us and does some channel, channel scalping and all that. It's fun. I know he would have been all over SOS and I would have been yelling at him to close up shop right now after this channel chat. I know him, dude. You got resistance right here, resistance right here, resistance right here. He would have been all over this shit. <laughs>
Yep, chasing is not a strategy. Dude, happy to help, man. Seriously, I guess we'll just wrap it up here, but super happy to help you guys, man. Every week that I can, some weeks we talk about just trading stuff. Some weeks we talk about, you know, any type of markets. And again, I think it's all relative. And the more you show up, whether it's my webinars, whether it's Aloha, it doesn't matter, man. You're just going to, you're going to pick, even if you learn one thing today that makes you better, or even just how to sit on hands better or wait for a perfect setup, it's going to help you, man. You're just going to sharpen your tools and get better. And I hope you guys learned something today. I really do. I hope every single week that you guys learn something cool, learn something new. We can help in any way, shape or form. And, you know, just to go back guys, it's like, yeah, thank you guys for showing up, seriously. Um, but I mean, guys, check it out, man. Seriously, look what we offer, man. Watch list every single day. Alex is putting together his full on detailed watch list through main chat. We're in here educating all day, trading the lines, helping out members. After the first hour, guys, I just, I, I, I was educating mostly. I'm on back end all day. So if you guys have any PM questions, you can definitely get a hold of me. But dude, I'm answering emails all day. I'm helping back and I'm helping with the emails, social media. So obviously, you can catch me in the immediate morning for the most part. And then, you know, interspruce throughout the day. But dude, I'm telling you, Val's in here educating all day, man. We all have our roles. We're all doing the best we can so that you guys every single day have your needs met, man. That's what it's all about. So, you know, if you guys have any questions, we have a channel dedicated to everything you need, whether it's brokers, whether it's taxes, whatever you need, we got it, dude. So, you know, stop wasting money on scanners, stop being with the wrong brokerage, stop wasting and giving your money to something that's not benefiting you. I promise you, if it's not, dude, if it, look, the only definition from an asset and a liability is an asset puts money in your pocket and a liability takes it. Dude, like if you're in stuff that's taking money from you and not producing an ROI, which is a return on investment, whether it's a scanner or, you know, a broker of choice that's not working out, dude, I mean, you got to let them go, right? Like that's, that's not, that's not actually benefiting you. So like I said, man, you know, Val posts the scanners every single day. Alex is literally posting a watch list, which pays for the membership itself. You combine that with the money you're going to save with Chad Hessing or Taniel at Trade Zero and Cobra. Dude, bust out the spreadsheet and I'm, I can almost guarantee you your MIC membership by the end of the year and the tax write-offs, guys. Reach out to Brian, dude. Shout out Brian. And, the, and like, if you use him for your tax plan, guys, the money that you're going to save by the end of the year, I, I, I almost swear to God, he's going to pay your membership. Like just calculate the fees and see, but dude, it's MIC is a tax write-off too as well. It's like, you just bought a new computer. It, it, there's not much difference. Talk to the tax professional and get all the details, but dude, MIC, you could write it off, dude. Like, <laughs> that's kind of, that's kind of big. So thank you guys. Thank you guys. We'll do this next week again. Anybody listen on YouTube, sorry if we didn't see all your questions. Uh, we hit them next week. We'll get you next week. And uh, me and Bao will tear it up with uh, Bao live trading next week and I'll slap him around and comment and hope he's not breaking rules and <laughs> it'll be a fun show, man. But catch you guys next week. Thank you. Thank you for showing up and uh, we'll get this uploaded. See you guys.